Okay, this will be part two. I don't know why, but the the video just the video just froze. So let's go over that. Um, I was just about to say that that um, at my I guess the criminals work their colleagues with Ann Wagner. She protects their behavior. Okay, I'll start on line 20 again. I, I really don't know why that um, froze. It's a little disturbing to me. Anyway, let's just uh, move ahead. Um, on October 31, 2022, plaintiff's principal electronically signed an application to open a trade station equity to account. 21, on or about November 17, 2022, uh, the plaintiff's application was approved. The account was opened and plaintiff's wire transfer to the account was deposited. 22, as part of the customer account agreement, the parties also agreed to the terms and conditions contained in the trade station's master securities lending agreement. And that's, that's also attached as an exhibit. 23, pursuant to section 2.1 of the lending agreement, the lending of a trade station customer's fully paid shares to third party brokers is subject to the terms and conditions of the lending agreement. 24, prior to borrowing a customer's fully paid shares, both the customer and trade station are to agree to quote, the terms of each loan, including the issuer of the securities, the amount of the securities to be lent, the basis of compensation, the amount of collateral to be transferred by the borrower, and any additional terms, unquote, id. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. So prior, prior to borrowing shares out of your account, the broker has agreed to agree with you the terms of each loan. I wonder how often that actually happens. 25, section 4.1, the lending agreement fully secures the loan of the security stating, quote, borrower, borrower, <laughs> borrower, 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 trade station shall prior to or concurrently with the transfer of the loan securities, but in no case later than the close of business of the day of such transfer, transfer to the lender collateral with a market value at least equal to 100% of the market value of the securities, but not to exceed 102% of the market value of the loan securities. Did he define who the lender is? It's a lending agreement. I'm not sure, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm not sure who's the lender in that paragraph, whether it's the plaintiff or it's the brokerage firm. I don't know. Anyway, so let me read it again. Um, the agreement states, quote, borrower, uh, trade station, shall prior to or concurrently with the transfer of the loan securities, but in no case later than the close of the business on the day of such transfer, transfer to lender, collateral with a market value at least equal to 100% of the market value of the securities, but not to exceed 102% of the market value of the loan to securities. Rereading it, I think this, the borrower is trade station, the lender is the plaintiff. What I was trying in my mind was, was seeing this as a transaction where trade station becomes the lender of shares to 
another entity, let's say Chuck Schwab, as the borrower. But that's not what it says here. So the lender clearly, I think, is the plaintiff who is Intercoastal Waterways LLC and their principal. Okay, 26. Upon information and belief, in accordance with the terms of the lending agreement, Trade Station placed an amount into a collateral account equal to 100% of the market value of plaintiff's MMTLP shares. At the time, plaintiff shares were borrowed. 27. Trade Station publicly states on its website that the customer whom the fully paid securities were borrowed from, quote, can sell or transfer your positions at any time, just as you would if they weren't on loan. As required, shares will be recalled and deposited back into your account, unquote. And they exhibit that as well. 28. Starting from the statement period between November 30, 2022, and December 30, 2022, Trade Station immediately borrowed all shares purchased by plaintiff. So they borrowed them all in, in a month's time at the end of 2022. They borrowed all of them purchased by plaintiff and began issuing interest payments to plaintiff. Ah, that's, that's pretty cool. So there's proof. There's proof of this transaction. And I think it's called consideration. So it, there's a contract. Uh, between December 5 and December 8, plaintiff executed the following 13 trades of MMTLP shares through its trade station account. Between December 5, 2022, and December 8, 2022. Okay, I'm not gonna read every one, but it over that three-day period, the plaintiff bought, it looks like, over 9,000 shares for uh, over $75,000. And uh, um, most of the trades were under 1,000. Two of the trades were over a thousand. One one of the trades was over three thousand. So um, they were all purchases. And um, I can I don't have a computer here, but on the on the thousand lot trade, the plaintiff paid eight bucks a share. Oh, it says it here. <laughs> They put it here. They show the price per share. Let me read those off. Uh, the first trade, 7.98. The next trade, 7.99. Third trade, $8. Fourth trade, 7.95. Fifth trade, 7.96. 7.89. Then 8.44, 8.19, 9.9, 8.09, 8.4, 8.4, 8.4, and then on December 8th, um, a trade went off to buy at $4.40. I will say every share I paid was in the, in the uh, seven, <laughs> 790 range, $8. Anyway, mine averaged just under $8. So plaintiff is not the only person abused by Ann Wagner's clients. Okay, number 30. On December 7, 2022, the settlement date of plaintiff's first purchases of MMTLP shares, Trade Station was authorized to borrow and subsequently lend plaintiff's MMTLP shares to the Doe defendants in exchange for regular interest payments. Why would they be borrowing the shares? There could have been a squeeze on, but Adina Friedman has no, no curiosity 
and Anne uh, Wagner has her silver in her campaign chest. Thirty-one, indeed. Trade Station almost immediately took the borrowed stock and loaned plaintiffs' MMTLP shares to the Doe it defendants and issued its first interest payments on plaintiff's transaction for the period November 30, 2022, through December 30, 2022. They give an exhibit on that as well. Since December 9, 2022, Trade Station dispersed monthly interest payments to plaintiff, which over the period plaintiff's Trade Station account was active, totaled no less than $326. That's a bargain. Trade Station and Wagner and the, the regulators are helping the crim criminals sell non-existent shares, and then their loan desks make this, as Pat Byrne called it, river of money available to themselves and to their customers and to the hedge funds. While plaintiff gets $326, By the way, Ann Wagner, I have a feeling there's a 50-50 chance, but I have a feeling this plaintiff could be a woman. Could be important to you to look out for women, seeing as how they own the majority of, of the wealth in the United States of America. They own the majority of investable assets, but hey, Stick with the guys at Goldman Sachs, Ann. They've got your back. Okay, number 33. On or about December 9, 2022, with the understanding the shares would be trading until December 12, 2022, plaintiff attempted to submit two limit sell orders with both being rejected by Trade Station's platform. Don't worry about it, Ann. Their money's good, Ann. Their money's good. The service you do, America couldn't live without your service, Ann. Your sacrifice, Ann. Plaintiff's first limit sell order was for 4,000 shares at $50 per share with an estimated trade value of 200,000. So, Ann Wagner, there's evidence that maybe you've seen that trades went off as high as 24000 a share because there was a squeeze on. But you protect the bad behavior in return for an envelope of cash. Isn't that what CREEP, the Committee to Re-Elect the President, did in Watergate, I, I really admire your service, Ann Wagner. I, I was there, I watched you live. All right, 35 plaintiff's second limit order was for 9,269 shares at uh, uh, $40 per share with an estimated trade value of 370,760. You know, had FINRA not stopped trading, Ann Wagner, you would have a wealthy, well, I don't know where you're from, but in Georgia, there'd be a wealthy constituent. Instead, you sold your soul to Goldman Sachs and Citadel. And what has Citadel ever done to add value in return for the billions Tens of billions of money uh, Citadel steals from the United States stock markets and that you protect. What values ever come from that, Ann? You? They're able to bribe you? 
I don't consider that much value at all. MMTLP was delisted from the over-the-counter exchange. Of course it was. And that's what the criminals do. They drive stock prices down and down and down. They attempt to seller box the price so that like that advertisement, help, they hit a button, help me. I've fallen and I can't get up. The stock can get never come up. You know what happens, Ann? As you collect your uh, uh, payoffs from the banksters, what happens is these big pools of money don't have to close out their, their trades. So not only did they counterfeit shares, and when you look in the macro level, not just this case, trillions of dollars go offshore. They don't, there's no closing transaction. There's no 1099. There's no taxes paid. And why don't you think about where you take your next envelope, who you take your next envelope from. Okay, so 36, on December 6, 2022, Nominal defendant FINRA provided the public notice which stated MMTLP shares would continue trading until December 12th, 2022. The shares would be canceled on December 13, 2022, and Nextbridge shares would be distributed to MMTLP shareholders with settled positions as of December 12, 2022, on December 14, 2022. So the, the record date, let's go back to the record date. The record date for the spinoff was December 12, 2022, under line 16. So that's December 12th. At that time, the trade... Uh, regime was trade date plus two. So that brought it back uh, the last trade date, the X date, so to speak, was the 8th, December 8th. So let's just read that sentence again. On December 6th, FINRA provided the public notice which stated that MMTLP shares would continue trading until December 12, 2022. The shares would be canceled on December 13, 2022, and that Nextbridge shares would be distributed to MMTLP shareholders with settled positions as of December 12, 2022, on December 14, 2022, which was a, was a Wednesday, the 12th was a Monday, and they added an exhibit. The, the, um, the uh, footnote on this page says, during pre-market trading on December 9, some MMTLP shareholders had pending sell orders successfully execute at prices of up to $2,400 a share, $2,400 a share. But that didn't interest Adina Friedman, did it? No, no little, uh, no uh, William Money, it didn't. That didn't scare Ann Wagner, did it? No, William Money, it didn't. Footnote number seven, during pre-market trading, on December 9, 2022, some MMTLP shareholders had pending sell orders successfully execute at prices of up to $2,400 per share. For unknown reasons, brokers subsequently reversed the executed trades and removed the proceeds from their customer's account. And do I need to say it? That's criminal. Those are executed trades. Adina Friedman, do I need to point out that you need to do your job? 
Hey, Goober, Gensler, what are, what are you doing at the SEC? Oh, that's right. You got $125 million to manage. Yeah, I guess that's a full-time job. You've got all the glad handing so that uh, you can become treasury secretary. I got it. You got other things to do. So I love this that Mark Bazile Law Firm put in. As such, the potential damages in this action may be calculated based on the market price of these executed trades or higher. Why stop there? And just Goldman Sachs, they want to meet you for dinner Monday night. I know you got other plans. It's a big, it's a big envelope though, Ann. Okay, number 37. On December 8th, FINRA updated its public notice. Uh, by the way, I'm gonna start skipping legal words. Um, if you want to read the full document without you know, some of these technical words skipped, um, you go to case number 24, CV 60891 AHS entered on the Florida Southern District docket on the fifth month, day 24 of year 2024. Okay, we're on page nine of 41, so I gotta pick it up, don't I? Uh, on December 8th, nominal defendant FINRA updated its public notice upon information and belief without meta materials input or consent, now stating that on December 13, 2022, that would have been the Tuesday, MMTLP shares would be quote unquote deleted and on December 14, 2022 would be removed. FINRA updated it's public knows notice on Thursday the 8th, I think it was Thursday, without input, stating that from the, from the company, stating that on the Tuesday after the record date, the 13th, MMTLP shares would be deleted, and on the Wednesday, the 14th, they'd be removed. All right, number 38. On December 9, 2022, FINRA placed a U3 halt on the trading of MMTLP shares. We believe that was Jessica Hopper, but that, that could be a whole video, I think, of itself. She earned her salary by catching two young people who allegedly cheated on their PACER exam to become registered reps. Can we hire anybody to actually do the job they're hired to do? Okay, 38, on December 9, 2022, FINRA placed a U3 halt on the trading of MMTLP shares. In its announcement, FINRA stated that the, quote, trading and quoting halt will end concurrently with the deletion of the symbol effective Tuesday, December 13, 2022, unquote, only allowing for the sale of MMTLP stock and the closing of short positions. The, the footnote says it describes shorting. I think we can skip that description. If you if you need that definition, footnote 88 is on the bottom of page nine. Uh, on December 13, 2022, FINRA deleted the MMTLP ticker. Subsequent to Nextbridge's S1 registration becoming effective on November 18, 2022, and to date, 
Nextbridge common stock has not traded on any public exchange. There's rumors that I trust that somebody offshore is already self-regulating and creating derivatives and other swap contracts, whatever they're called. Doesn't interest Dan Wagner. Doesn't interest Dan Wagner. You know, it's the whole Financial Services Committee. I'm just disappointed in her. I thought she had more integrity. Who's the one with the bow tie? I can't remember his name. Okay, line 41. On December 13, 2022, TradeStation sent its clients who held shares of MMTLP, including plaintiff's principal, an email notification stating, quote, unless we hear from you to the contrary by the close of business on December 29, 2022, TradeStation will send your next bridge shares to American Stock and Transfer Trust Company. That's AST. That's the transfer agent. So on the Tuesday, after the record date, Trade Station sent to clients who held MMTLP an email saying, unless we hear from you to the contrary, by the close of, the, of business, by year end, December 29, 2022, we will send your next big shares to the transfer agent. It's pretty clear cut. Number 42. On December 28, plaintiff's principal responded to Trade Station's notification stating plaintiff would like to keep <clears throat> plaintiff's shares of Nextbridge Hydrocarbons in Intercoastal's Trade Station account and refused the transfer of the Nextbridge shares to an AST brokerage account. That's interesting. I'm sure uh, the lawyers will educate me, but I don't think transfer agents have brokerage accounts. But I'm about, you're gonna find out that that guy who texted me was right, I'm a complete idiot, we'll find out. All right, 43, subsequently, on December 22, 2023, plaintiff's principal, through Trade Station's customer service support portal, requested Trade Station transfer a portion of plaintiff's next bridge shares to an AST brokerage account. So I guess that was contrary to the, the initial in indication. Fair enough, fair enough. So they, they, the plaintiff tried to transfer some shares to AST. I, I don't know why they call it a brokerage account. We'll find out. Uh, 44, in response to plaintiff's request, a trade station representative notified plaintiff it was unable to transfer the next bridge shares to an AST brokerage account. Hey, Ann Wagner. Hey, Ann Wagner. Psst. Ann Wagner, you know why they couldn't do it? Rumors are there's a billion counterfeit shares. They didn't exist, Ann Wagner. Counterfeit. Corruption, fraud. Go ahead and take the payout from Goldman Sachs. Those are really nice lobbyists, aren't they? The one, she's just so nice. She always remembers your birthday. So thoughtful. And she called you inquiring about your, your uh, friend's health. Yeah, they're not bad people. They're too big to fail. Okay, so in response to 
plaintiff's request, the trade station said that trade station was then unable to transfer Nextbridge shares to the transfer agent. 45, plaintiff's principal subsequently inquired whether Intercoastal's Nextbridge shares were backed up by a physical share certificate issued by Nextbridge or, or by, um, yeah, that's right, by Nextbridge. Further, plaintiff correctly noted that any shares issued by Nextbridge to the shareholders' brokerage accounts should have been distributed and backed up by physical share certificates. And it doesn't concern you. And I know, Adina Friedman, <laughs> this is by, beyond your interest level. Beyond your interest level. There's a, there's a new show at the Met you should catch. It's absolute, the costumes are darling. 47, the representative confirmed that Nextbridge shares held at trade station were, quote, not backed up by physical certificate, unquote, because, quote, there is currently no market for the security, unquote. Saying so, your buddies that you're taking checks from, they lie. That's called fraud. 48, on or about December 29, 2023, MM, that's, that's a year later from the, the, um, from the original deadline given, unless we hear from you to the contrary by the close of business, uh, December 29, 2022, we will send your next bridge shares to the transfer agent a full year later. On or about December 29, 2023, MMTLP shareholders initiated discussion on Twitter regarding an announcement made by TradeStation to some of its customers, which stated that, quote, upon the initial distribution of NextBridge common stock, Broker dealers like Trade Station were granted physical certificates based on their customers' former holdings of meta materials. And they exhibit that. Uh, footnote nine here whether there is a market for a security is wholly irrelevant to the amount of shares based on the amount held in Trade Station's records for the benefits of its customers. Brilliant, well-stated Mark Bazile Law Firm, issued as a physical certificate to Trade Station pursuant to Nextbridge's share exchange. Hey, Ann, you're being bought out to look the other way. It's not right. It's not right. You're a better person than that. Hey, Adina Friedman, happening in the NASDAQ markets. And the CEOs that come to the NASDAQ and they think they've graduated, they've just descended into Adina Friedman's hell. Okay, 49. The announcement further states, quote, the Nextbridge certificates that Trade Station received excluded a large number of Nextbridge shares that had been lent to other broker dealers as part of Trade Station's fully paid lending program. Unquote. Interesting. Let's see where that leads. 50. Trade Station was not able and still has not been able to recall its customers' shares, which were loaned in excess of the amount of fully paired shares recorded by Trade Station at the time Nextbridge distributed physical share certificates. So let's break that down. Nextbridge, uh, sorry, Trade Station had shares at DTCC, 
They had physical, physical shares, but they had lent those out. Do you see how it's like the banking system? If, you, if, if Ann went down to her credit un, union on Capitol Hill and asked to withdraw the entirety of the Goldman Sachs bribe that she deposited the next day, it wouldn't be there. She could, she could probably get 10% of it, or since she's such a good customer, if she was the only, were the only one showing up, maybe she'd get it. But conceptually, there's only 10% of that money still available. That's what they're doing here. They're taking those shares they have physically, they're lending them out as a huge profit center. Remember, uh, Patrick Byrne calls Goldman Sachs a lending desk with the name of an investment bank on it. Um, so then Trade Station had lent out shares, but reflected those shares as existing in plaintiff's account. I can't imagine that Trade Station made something like 300, whatever the number was, $387, which is what plaintiff received. I'm sure Trade Station made a hell of a lot more money lending that out. Particularly when there was a short squeeze on. I bet they got a thousand percent or more to lend those shares out. And they give plaintiff nothing. And then on top of that, plaintiff doesn't even have a right to the shares. Well, let's let me stop my speculating and let's get to some good lawyer lawyering. 51. Trade station noted that because some of their customer shares were not backed up by a physical certificate, Trade Station would be, quote, unable to honor some of their customers' requests to register and record their ownership in book entry form with AST, unquote, and must decline some of their customers' transfer requests. Doesn't bother you, Ann, because you, you got your pack sheesh. 52. By its own admission, Trade Station loaned third party brokers its customers fully paid MMTLP shares in an account in excess of those it held for the benefit of its customers, i.e., counterfeit MMTLP shares. They're turning the security custodial system into a fractional security custodial system. They're trying to turn the security markets into fractional reserve currency, uh, sorry, fractional reserve security markets. And they think they can get away with it because they pay off Ann Wagner. And they get a, a, a former uh, employee of Carlisle Group To run, to run FINRA. This is where full disclosure should come in. But that doesn't bother Ann Wagner. 53. Because it loaned third-party brokers counterfeit shares, Nextbridge issued Trade Station a share certificate which excluded a large number of shares which were loaned to third-party brokers, leading to a share imbalance. Yeah, I mean, on the records at, the, at Nextbridge, at DTCC, Trade Station owned X amount of real shares. They Xeroxed them, mimeographed them, loaned them out at usury rates, raking in tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, patting their pockets, giving them money they could give to Ann Wagner and uh, Bob's your uncle. Because if 
remember those friends of yours on, on Twitter I, suggesting for two days trading? They work for the shorts. If the shorts could convince Nextbridge to trade, they could just hide all this fractional reserve security uh, uh, creation in the float of the new company. Doesn't bother Ann Wagner. Doesn't bother Aunt Adina Friedman. Doesn't bother Gary Gensler. So basically, uh, be because TradeStation had issued counterfeit shares, uh, you know, this is about loaning them. I would argue that TradeStation also didn't settle trades that they should have, but I guess, you know, as good attorneys, they're keeping this narrow. But the point is in customer accounts at TradeStation, were non-existent shares, IOUs. Okay, footnote number 10. Federal law defines the term counterfeited in terms of securities of the states and private entities as, quote, a document that purports to be genuine but is not because it has been falsely made or manufactured in its entirety, unquote. Number 11, the SEC refers to, quote, naked short abuse, unquote, as, quote, counterfeiting stock, unquote. Pursuant to the lending agreement, TradeStation lends its customers fully paid shares, quote, in connection with short sales, unquote, or, quote, to satisfy delivery requirements resulting from short sales, unquote. These companies were set up to help the clients of Ann Wagner and the benefactors of Adina Friedman. These, these brokerage firms were set up to help the corrupt bankster system. They were set up to help. It's, it's our big funds that are doing it with an arm's length and no one cares. It's so depressing, no one cares. Mark Bazile cares, plaintiff cares, Richard Hoffman cares, but no one cares. Footnote number 23, when Nextbridge sent TradeStation a share certificate in connection with the share exchange, plaintiff believes TradeStation's excess lending in connection with naked short sales, counterfeiting, you know, Xeroxing, mimeographing, title. It's just theft. It's corruption. This is all fancy stuff. It's a lot of legalese. And, and the SEC hires Gibson Dunn. Kurt Kramer hires Gibson Dunn. I bet Gibson Dunn contributes to Ann Wagner's uh, re-election committee. What, what is it called? Crap? The committee to re-elect Ann? Well, the re-elect... Called... Uh, cro cro like Crow or something. Committee to re-elect Ann Wagner representative. Anyway, it goes on to describe the share imbalance. When you read it in legal documents, it sounds like the normal course of business, although I think Mark Bazile's done a great job here. But it makes it seem so anodyne. You know, it's, it's just, they're businessmen. I shouldn't have invested. It's over the counter. It's NASDAQ. Buyer beware. That's not the promise. That's not what made America great. 
Look, it's not going to take long for China, South Korea, India, Russia to create honest markets. And we're going to we're just going to be a country with a lot of farms and big cities and we're not going to have our standing in the world. But at least we have great female congresswomen like Ann Wagner. We're not like those other countries. I know you feel like I'm picking on her. I am. I am. I can't believe this. I cannot believe this is allowed to occur. And it doesn't take much work. Skip one steak dinner with Goldman Sachs, Anne, and, and read this, and then bring people into your office, like Ham Shortkiller, who can explain it to you in 15 minutes. Stop listening to the slick lobbyists or we're going to lose our republic. It's as simple as that, Ann Wagner. Okay, 54. Trade Station claims it has been unable to reclaim this portion of the excess shares it had loaned to third-party brokers, causing Trade Station's customers, including plaintiff, to be unable to transfer, sell, or otherwise dispose of their fully paid and expert shares. So Ann, what's going on there? When you go to your credit union or you go down to Chase Bank, you've deposited the million dollars you received from Goldman Sachs, and you go into your account a month later and ask for a million, they may or may not be able to give it to you, but they're probably gonna say, well, we can arrange that. You know, it might range from hours to a couple of days, or we can do a wire. Now a wire stays in the electronic system and gives their back offices time to readjust the chairs on the deck. Just like electronic issuance of shares, no physical anymore, allows Wall Street to do that behind the scenes. But if everybody comes in at the same time and asks for money from your bank, you're not going to get your Goldman Sachs contribution then because effectively there's been a bank run. Everybody called out the system. The 10% that the banks leave in their accounts to meet customer withdrawals got called all at once. Well, that's what's happening here. Because NextBridge was distributed as a private company with no intention to trade, the criminal shorts who were your clients, in, they had no way to move the chairs around on the deck. Everyone all at once needed physical shares. And there aren't enough. And I, my, my guess is it's at least 10 to 1. That'd be 1.65 1 billion shares, Ann. And it doesn't interest you. I don't understand it, why you would say that uh, transparency is a violation of privacy when it's hurting female investors all over the country and men but we're in a world where you know men have all the advantages so we don't worry about men so just worry about women fifty five on march nineteen two thousand twenty four that's this year print plaintiff contacted Trade Station's Client Services Department to provide Trade Station notice of plaintiff's intent to terminate the loan of its next bridge share pursuant to Section 7.1 of the lending agreement and to terminate the lending agreement in full. Bravo, plaintiff. Bravo, plaintiff. Bravo, plaintiff. 56, the lending agreement was terminated 
on or about March 22nd. 57. At the termination of the lending agreement, plaintiff requested trade station return its fully paid shares by delivering physical certificated Nexford shares pursuant to section 16.1 of the lending agreement. 58. Trade station, contrary to its previous public announcement, notified plaintiff by phone that it could not and would not deliver physical Nexbridge shares certificates because it was never sent physical certificates by Nexbridge. Ann Wagner, the problem isn't Nexbridge. Nexbridge sent all of its physical shares. The problem is, Ann, your clients who employ you with packets of cash under the table, counterfeited shares. Don't let it bother you. Don't let it bother you. It'll all work out. Everything will be okay. Same goes to you, Gary Gensler. I saw you, Gary, in Congress, and you were such a glad-hander weasel. I had, and, you, and then you walked the halls with such arrogance. I think you're hopeless. There's no recovery. With Ann Wagner, I'm hoping she can find within herself that integrity and that strength she occasionally displays. Even now she can return the money or disavow it and represent American people and American investors. I, I, I don't, I think it's hopeless going after Gary Gensler. Okay, 59, further trade stations notice that it was unable and unwilling to deliver physical Nexbird shares to plaintiff constitutes an event of default under section 13.7 of the lending agreement. Yay, Mark Bazile. Yay, Mark Bazile. Number 60, a diagram to illustrate the material events of the action during this relevant period. Can we just skip that? I'll show it to you. You can, you can freeze frame. I'm going to skip that. It's from October 22 to March 24. Okay, 61. The relevant RICO enterprise is an ongoing association, in fact, consisting of Trade Station and the Doe defendants with apparent relationships among the defendants depicted below. I love this this lawsuit. Mark Bazile has done a great job. That's the one, that was the thing I didn't read out. Wow, this looks great. We might have to read this one out. I know Ann doesn't have time to read all this. This probably looks like the this probably looks like how money is given under the table to Ann Wagner's uh, re-election campaign by Goldman Sachs through intermediaries. Okay, so. Basically, this chart is making a racketeering charge, it looks like, anyway, we'll find out, against Trade Station, FINRA, Doe defendants, and under the Doe defendants, uh, the RICO Enterprise, this is the whole group, the RICO Enterprise, Doe defendants, reaped all of the illicit revenue generated by short sales of MMTLP. 
The Doe defendants are a RICO association, in fact, of third-party broker-dealers separate from Trade Station, which constitutes a RICO enterprise within the meaning of the statute. 63. Since the U3 halt, the Doe defendants' identities have purposely, intentionally, and with an intent to hinder any outside investigation by retail shareholders and their counsel, including plaintiff, as well as the United States Congress, have been hidden and being protected by FINRA, who refuses numerous requests for this data, not only by Congress, but also in private litigation, which would identify the participants of this RICO enterprise. And I think, Ann, you better vote against CAT because you wouldn't want the personal data of this racketeering enterprise, they're the ones in red, to be public in. This chart's like how they pay you under the table. You're probably familiar with it. Sixty-four. At all relevant times, the Doe defendants had a common purpose of seeking to illegally short MMTLP shares for profit, borrowing both legitimate and or selling counterfeit MMTLP shares and selling the MMTLP shares on the open market to open short positions. Look, this doesn't get into it, but there's four tickets in the United States. They're selling under the market maker exemption. And the SEC has casework out there. Before you sell, you have to locate the shares in writing. Doesn't bother Ann, doesn't bother Adina, doesn't bother Gary, doesn't bother Robert. After the U3 halt was implemented, on December 9, 2022, and the MMTLP ticker symbol was deleted on December 31, sorry, on December 13, that was the Tuesday, 2022, repurchasing and returning any borrowed legitimate and or counterfeit MMTLP shares to cover any outstanding short positions became impossible. And remember, the shorts are trapped here. That's why they go on Twitter, to scare you into inaction. I, I'm not going to go into it because this is a long video already. But please move your shares. And I can't give you personal advice. But consider moving your shares from the transfer agent into, uh, sorry, from these fake accounts into the transfer agent at Nextbridge Hydrocarbons. It's AST, but I think it's called uh, Xfinity or something like that. Okay, so let's read that again. After the U3 halt, repurchasing borrowed shares became impossible thus allowing the Doe defendants to retain all illicit profits and returns generated from their short sales of the borrowed true as well as counterfeit MMTLP shares uh, it received from TradeStation. 65. Prior to December 14, 2022, TradeStation fraudulently and intentionally loaned an amount of MMTLP shares to the Doe defendants, the criminals, and Wagner's clients, in excess of the amount of fully paid shares Trade Station held on record in its clients' accounts for the benefit of its customers at the time Nextbridge distributed share certificates in counterfeit shares in violation of codes. Let's try that again. I'll try to leave some words out. Before December 14th, 2022, TradeStation 
fraudulently loaned MMTLP shares to the criminals in excess of the amount of physical shares trade station held in its name in violation of codes. 66. Between October 21 and December 12, 22, trade station's conduct and participation in the affairs of the Doe Defendants Enterprise included obtaining its customers' fully paid MMTLP shares by falsely stating on its website that its customers would retain the right to sell their shares at any time, misrepresentation, uh, knowingly, unlawfully, and consistently lending an amount of MMTLP shares in excess of the amount held on record for benefit of its customers, including the plaintiff. If you're not going to stop it, Ann, you should at least require full disclosure to customers. It's a basic tenet of securities law. Look it up, Reg FD. Um, so they sold shares in excess to the Doe defendants for the purpose of opening short positions in excess of the amount held on record for the benefit of its customers via electronic transfer. And they charged and collected a commission fee or margin interest, a part of which was given to its customers as interest payments in connection with the lending of its customers' MMTLP shares, as well as shares loaned to the Doe defendants in excess of the amount held on record in Trade Station's customers' accounts. 67. Upon information and belief, this scheme was effectuated commencing around November 22, 2022. <laughs> well, part of this scheme. The, the the billions of shares sold, if it's that high, started under torchlight. But with MMTLP opening with a market price of $11.90 a share and resulting in a precipitous drop of the then trading MMTLP securities price just prior to FINRA instituting this odd U3 uh, halt to 290 per share in December 8, 2022, harming plaintiff and other similarly situated holders of MMTLP, other trade station clients. 68, when plaintiff opened its trade station account, it agreed to section 38 of the trade Station Securities Customer Account Agreement, which is attached. 69, Section 38 of that agreement provides I guess page 16 is blank or something, I don't know. Anyway, it provides any and all controversies any and all controversies, claims, and disputes relating to your account, the services, and or the determination of any contractual rights and liabilities under this agreement, which may arise between you and trade station security, shall be determined by arbitration conducted before FINRA in accordance with its arbitration rules in force. This is what scares most attorneys away, the arbitration clause. And it's done before FINRA. And and Robert Cook and uh, Jessica Hopper and that there's a woman at Goldman Sachs. She's on she's a high up at Goldman Sachs and she's on the board of FINRA. She's a lawyer. They're all there to protect Goldman Sachs. They're not there to protect you. That's why this clause is here. The arbitration clause. And I'm glad Mark Bazil is attacking it best he can. And he's not afraid of it. 
Number 70, on December 6, 2022, FINRA provided the public notice of Meta Materials corporate action, which stated that MMTLP shares would constitute, sorry, would continue trading until December 12, 2022. The shares would be canceled on December 13, 2022, and that NextBridge shares would be distributed to MMTLP shareholders with settled positions as of December 12, 2022. On December 8, 2022, a modified notice of corporate action was released by FINRA, which stated that on December 13, 2022, the MMTLP sticker would be deleted and on December 14, 2022, would be removed. 72. This corporate action modified in violation of FINRA Rule 6490 was not authorized and it was not approved by Meta Materials. 73. On December 9, 2022, FINRA placed a U3 halt on the trading of MMTLP shares, preventing any individual or entity who held an open short position from repurchasing MMTLP shares on the open market, closing prevented them from closing their short positions or returning any borrowed MMTLP shares to respective owners. 74, later on December 13, 22, the MMTLP ticker was diluted. 75, in response to a pre-litigation discovery petition filed in the Supreme Court of the State of New York, County of New York, for the pre-action disclosure of FINRA's electronic blue sheets, FINRA filed an affidavit in opposition to the petition stating, quote, FINRA directed its member firms to halt quoting and trading in MMTLP because it determined that it was necessary to protect investors <clears throat> and the public interest where an extraordinary event had caused or had the potential to cause significant uncertainty in the settlement and clearance process for shares of MMTLP. And Adina, Gary, do you see, Robert, do you see Chuck Crawwell, whatever your name is, do you see how they filed this, FINRA files this affidavit that they're closing the barn door after the fire burned, burned down all the horses or they're opening the barn door. They're closing the barn door after the horses left. They're, they're, they're letting the horses escape after the fire already destroyed the horses. FINRA, can you believe the audacity? FINRA directed its member firms, broker-dealers, FINRA directed brokers to halt quoting and trading in MMTLP because FINRA had determined it was necessary to protect investors and the public interest. They did this after the shorting and the destruction of not one company, but three, Torchlight, MMAT, and then the attempted destruction, which I think is ongoing of Nextbridge Hydrocarbons. And it doesn't bother Ann Wagner. You gotta hide the private information of the banksters. To protect public investors and public interest where an extraordinary event, it was nothing was extraordinary about it. Jessica Hopper, I think she wrote it, said just let Nextbridge trade and move those short positions into the trading of the new ticker, like we always do. It's nothing extraordinary. What's extraordinary is that the trading uh, never occurred, that MMTLP transferred into a, public, a private company, not a public one, into a private non-trading company. 
That's what, that's what was extraordinary. It caught out the fraud and the corruption of FINRA and the purchased state of the United States Congress. It had the potential to cause significant uncertainty. So FINRA's, FINRA's solution was to remove all uncertainty and, and sanction the theft by the criminals. Make it certain. It's done. It just breaks my heart. It just breaks my heart. You've got 65,000 people hurting. And this is just one stock. And people believe in the government. And Ann Wagner gets contributions from Citadel Securities. And Adina Friedman puts blather on her website about her mission statement and does nothing. Absolutely nothing. Robert Cook, himself a mouse of a man, defers to a mouse of a man, uh, Gary Gensler. They do nothing. And when they do anything, it's a slap on the wrist. And the, the whole circus goes on and on and on. I mean, it's, it's enough to be really depressed about. 76, further, prior to the youth rehaul, FINRA claimed it had initiated an investigation into potential fraud relating to both the MMT LP and MMAT ticker symbols. They're, they're worried about the fraud that the criminals created in MMT LP, but they're not worried about the fraud created by trillions of dollars worth of counterfeit shares sold in the U.S. markets. And Ann Wagner, I repeat, if you're not going to do anything about it, fully disclose it. You remember those cigarette packs with a black lung smoking kills? Just put it on every investment account, every website, every confirmation. Investing destroys your financial health because we in the Congress do not oversee the financial securities uh, regulators and the regulators do not enforce settlement. Seventy-seven pursuant to a response to a Freedom of Information Act request submitted upon the SEC on or about December five, twenty-two. FINRA noted it was made aware of fraud being committed pertaining to MMTLP as it was, quote, unquote, blue sheeting. Its member broker dealers relating to MMTLP prior to the enactment of the U3 halt. 78, on March 16, 2023, FINRA released a fact addressing public concerns. 76, 79, subsequently, November 6, 2023, FINRA released a supplemental frequently asked question. 80, in the supplemental, FINRA addresses a public concern regarding the short interest in the MMTLP ticker on December 12, 22, stating that at the time MMTLP was halted, the outstanding short interest in MMTLP was approximately 2.65 million shares. And please vote for CAT. This is a lie. It's inept. They know. They know that the number of, of shares short slash counterfeited is a billion shares. It doesn't scare you. Doesn't scare Adina Friedman. Doesn't scare Goldman uh, Goldman Sachs's Gary Gensler. They have a they have a description of what blue sheets are. 
which you all you all know what it is. 81, that's in the footnote. 81, despite stating the U3 halt was enacted to, quote, protect investors from an extraordinary event, quote, FINRA also publicly stated that it failed to account for concerns regarding the existing, the existence of short positions in MMTLP when halting and subsequently deleting MMTLP's ticker. 82, upon information and belief, FINRA failed to oversee, supervise, and initiate disciplinary action against its member broker dealers for violations of state and federal securities laws for lending, borrowing, and sale of counterfeit MMTLP shares into the open market, which resulted in the opening of short positions which could not close. Counterfeiting, really. 83, the dispute between this plaintiff and trade station and plaintiff's claims set forth here in AFER stem in part from actions taken by FINRA in its role as a self-regulatory, thank you, Bill Clinton, organization, market regulator and broker-dealer regulator. Specifically, plaintiff's claims are derived from the repercussions of FINRA's enactment of a U3 halt on the MMTLP ticker on December 9, 2022. I don't think Ronald Reagan could have gotten legislation passed that made FINRA, the SEC, self-regulatory and made the creation of derivative securities a non-regulated non regulated marketplace. Only Bill Clinton could have done that. Best Republican president Republicans ever had. 85, it has now been more than 520 days since FINRA instituted its U3 halt. FINRA has failed to bring any disciplinary actions against the brokers. It's a lot, of, that's a lot like uh, in the financial crisis of 2008. Do you remember any banksters going to jail as you lost your homes, lost your 401ks? Did you see trillions of dollars go to bring jobs back to you and your communities? Or did they go to the four big banks and the handful of hedge funds that are over a trillion dollars each, and they bribe Ann Wagner. FINRA has failed to bring any disciplinary actions against the brokers under its supervision with admitted legal short as well as illegal short positions. FINRA has submitted Conflicting public reports and statement. FINRA has approved corporate actions, which exceeds their authority, that were not authorized by the issuer, Meta Materials. FINRA has failed to adequately address several inquiries and demands by members of Congress. And FINRA has worked with the SEC to stonewall any efforts by congressional representatives to secure information and evidence as to their constituents' complaints. FINRA has not disciplined Trade Station for the admitted imbalance that Trade Station is carrying on its books and has not addressed the admitted overall short position of at least 2.6 million shares that have not been covered. This action and the facts surrounding it likely constitute a crime scene. Bravo, Mark Bazile. Bravo, Mark Bazile. They likely constitute a crime scene essentially frozen in time. Bravo, plaintiff. Bravo, plaintiff. Attributable to FINRA's actions as a so-called self-regulatory agency. I put so-called in there, that it failed to take any action to correct. Okay, the footnotes, December 23, 23, 
74 members of the House of Representatives sent a letter to Goober Gary Gensler, Robert Cook at FINRA, um, Seventeen. Representative Ralph Norman, good for him. Eighteen. Greg McCabe sent in, uh, sent in a letter. Nextbridge has received information that suggests the number of short positions may be significantly higher than FINRA's estimated two point six. McCabe went on and said, I guess later, he has knowledge, quote, of an admitted shareholder imbalance from one single financial institution that is in multiples more than 2.65 million shares. That's from the CEO of an expert. Do you guys see that the financial system is owned by Goldman Sachs. Eighty six, because plaintiffs' claims against trade stations stem directly from FINRA's actions and lack of action as a market regulator, <laughs> they're there to protect the criminals. That all of this behavior, which this document uh, courageously describes, but only describes a portion of, is protected by Congress, by the Senate, by the President, by the Treasury, by uh, the, the DTCC, by uh, NASDAQ, by FINRA, by the OTC markets by your broker dealers. It's all protected behavior. Okay, 86, because plaintiff's claims against trade station stem directly from FINRA's actions and inactions as a market regulator, such as FINRA's institution of the U3 halt, FINRA cannot fulfill its duties as an unbiased arbitrator <laughs> in this dispute pursuant to the arbitration agreement. As such, plaintiff requires the instant matter be heard and decided through the unbiased lens of this court to ensure a fair resolution for all parties involved regarded of the language and terms of the customer account agreement and arbitration agreement. All right, so it took us it took us 21 pages to get there. This whole case is going to hinge on that. Line 87. If the court agrees that the arbitration clause can be vitiated, you know, put aside, that's going to be a huge breakthrough and Wall Street's gonna shiver me timbers. That's on page 21, but that's what this lawsuit's all about, is uh, plaintiff requires the instant matter be heard and decided through the unbiased lens of this court to ensure a fair resolution for all parties involved regardless of the language or terms of the customer account agreement and arbitration agreement. That's the case. That's Rafa Nadal getting past Zverev in his first match then he can win the French Open again. If they can get past that, they're gonna win this case. I will say if you wanna win, 
I hope they don't settle. But I bet the check's going to be big. I bet the check's going to be big. It's going to be hard to turn down. There will be a release that comes with this settlement if when it comes. Because I'm if it gets past this, there's going to be a settlement. Uh, I hope there's enough steel in the spine of everyone involved to push for full disclosure. Because then the settlement will be massive. First cause of action, 88. Plaintiff incorporates by reference paragraphs 1 to 60 of this complaint. Okay, 89. Section of the Exchange Act provides in relevant part that, quote, every contract, the performance of which involves the violation of or the continuance of any relationship or practice in violation of any provision or any rule or regulation thereunder shall be void. The contract shall be void as regards the rights of any person who in violation of such provision, rule or regulation shall have made or engaged in the performance of any such contract. Pretty powerful, Mark Bazile. Number 90, rule, blah, 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 I'm, I'm 15C3, caught up. Quote, a broker or dealer shall promptly obtain and shall thereafter maintain the physical uh, possession or control of all fully paid securities and excess margin securities carried by a broker or dealer for the account of customers, unquote. Okay, there's a there's a um, footnote on the bottom of page 21, and it's about McCabe, and it goes in to there's no QCIP number and etc. But it sa it says um, the Doe defendants, that's the criminals who are Ann Wagner's clients, and they're the places that. Uh, Adina Friedman wants to retire and get a big check for the rest of her life every year from. The Doe defendants' outstanding short positions in Nextbridge cannot and will never be covered. And what happens there, Adina Friedman? They don't, there's no closing transaction. All that money is offshore, it's never taxed. It pays for Gibson Dunn. It pays for Ann Wagner. It pays literally for the media coverage. Look up who owns the, the media in this country. I'll give you a hint. BlackRock. 91, TradeStation is a securities brokerage firm. 92, TradeStation continues to have an obligation to comply with federal securities laws. 93, Trade Station was authorized to borrow and subsequently lend plaintiff's MMTLP shares as early as December 7th, 2022. Tora, Tora, Tora. The settlement date of the first purchases made, plaintiff made through its Trade Station account. 94, Trade Station announced to its customers attributable to the lending of MMTLP shares. As part of Trade Station's lending program, Nextbridge issued a physical share certificate pursuant to its November 18th, 2022 Form S1 share exchange, which excluded, quote, a large number of Nextbridge shares that had been lent to other broker dealers, unquote, lent by Trade Station. 95 plaintiff alleges that with reasonable effort, Trade Station could have and should have acquired physical share certificates from the criminals they loaned the shares to in conjunction with, I'm, paraphr I'm trying to get through it quickly, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, uh, conjunction with short sales as outlined in the lending agreement 
because the third party broker dealers were required to return any shares borrowed from TradeStation, which opened the third party's short positions. 96, although, quote, no market for this security, unquote, exists, as stated by TradeStation, TradeStation should have but failed to reacquire the shares. That could have done, been done and would have done in a monster of short squeezes if Jessica Hopper hadn't put in the U3 halt at FINRA and Ann, Ann uh, Wagner. If you could get your committee to approve for the audit trail, that's, that's just even playing field. That's just giving everybody the same inf information. It's full disclosure. But guess what? TradeStation would have had to start at $2,400 a share. And who knows how high it could have gone. So FINRA was protecting their broker dealers, not you. Not you. NASDAQ's there to protect the, the banksters too. It's not there to protect CEOs or shareholders. Adina Friedman is there to protect the interests of Carlisle Group. Although no market for the security exists, stated by TradeStation, TradeStation should have, but failed to reacquire the shares it loaned to other broker dealers, knowing that pursuant to Fender's modification, of the December 8 notice of corporate action, the MMTLP dis, uh, ticker would be deleted on December 13. They're all in it together. 97, Trade Station's failures in its duties to its customers constitute a violation of the Exchange Act, Rule 15C3-3B1. 98, due to Trade Station's performance, under the lending agreement in violation of the Exchange Act, plaintiff has been indefinitely dispossessed of its property with TradeStation failing to offer any of its customers, including plaintiff, proper recourse. 99, as such, plaintiff respectively requests that this course find the lending agreement voidable and subject to rescission Persuasion to Section 29B of the Exchange Act. That's a big part of this case, too. I'd, I'd put the arbitration clause first. I'd put this second in terms of huge breakthroughs initiated by the courage and hard work of the Mark Bazile law firm. And the plaintiff. Okay, the second cause of action uh, they incorporate everything said before. Um, a, a Florida statutes establish a duty of securities intermediary to maintain financial assets, stating, quote, a securities intermediary shall promptly obtain and thereafter maintain a financial asset in a quantity corresponding to the aggregate of all security entitlements, it has established in favor, in favor of its entitlement holders with respect to that financial asset. Ah, so you can't have fractional reserve. You can't have a facsimile of fractional reserve banking when you're dealing with security assets. Are, are you saying securities aren't fungible like dollar bills are? Hmm? Are you saying that one, one person's share certificate entitles them to rights like voting, that one dollar bill is exchangeable for a dollar, another dollar bill pretty much all day long, doesn't matter which one you have, as long as you have a legitimate dollar bill. It's a little different with securities. All right, 102, the Florida statutes define a securities intermediary as a person, including a bank or broker, that is in the ordinary course of its businesses, maintains security accounts for others, and is acting in that capacity. 103, Florida statutes mirror 
the federal law requirement found in Rule 15C 3-3, establishing a security intermediary's requirement to maintain physical possession and control all fully paid securities held for the benefit of the intermediary's customers. You know, they, they moved this to the electronic system and about a decade ago, uh, broker dealers no longer maintain fiscal certificates, physical certificates. Maybe you got to change that. Maybe you got to go back to T plus five where brokers had to bike certificates across Wall Street to the other firm. Maybe broker dealers should maintain physical certificates. They can do it. The government wants to tax Venmo accounts. MasterCard can find out that someone took 6,000 from my account after I bought a cup of coffee in Paris. In Paris. They go through trillions of, of transactions with no miss. They can track your phone records. and your, your verbal conversations, they can track it. Okay, um, 104, Trade Station, a registered broker and securities intermediary holds a duty to maintain financial assets for physical certificates in favor of the plaintiff. Trade Station admitted to its customers it failed in this duty by its own emission, Trade Station loaned third parties its customers fully paid MMTLP shares in an amount in excess of those held in benefit. In other words, it loaned counterfeit shares. 107, because it loaned third party broker counterfeit shares, Nextbridge issued Trade Station a certificate that excluded a large number of shares which were loaned to third party brokers leading to a share imbalance. Trade Station claims it has been able to reclaim this portion of the excess shares it loaned to third parties brokers, be causing Trade Station's customers to be unable to transfer, sell, or otherwise dispose of their fully paid Nextbridge shares. In addition, Trade Station's failure to issue fit plaintiff fiscal share certificates has denied plaintiff a possesses right of possession over its property. One ten. further to date, after disposing plaintiff of its property, Trade Station has not dispersed the agreed upon collateral pursuant to the lending agreement after Trade Station failed to transfer plaintiff's next bridge shares to AST. As such, plaintiff respectively request that this court award monetary damages in the amount held in collateral for the benefit of the plaintiff, as well as any further relief this court may deem just and proper. I hope it includes full disclosure of, of the behavior of the racketeering group. 3rd cause plaintiff incorporates everything before stated uh florida statutes establish a duty of securities intermediary to comply with an entitlement order the securities intermediary shall comply with an entitlement order if the entitlement order is originated by the appropriate person <clears throat> A, curse, a cursory look at the language of the Florida statute. Shows that an inherent duty of a securities intermediary in the intermediary's relationship with its customers is the intermediary's absolute duty to comply with its customers entitlement orders. I guess I breezed over what an entitlement order is. It's a notification communicated to a securities intermediary 
directing transfer or redemption of a financial asset to which the entitlement holder has a security entitlement. Under Florida law, Trade Station was required to comply with plaintiff's entitlement order requesting a portion of plaintiff's shares be transferred to the transfer agent. Trade Station noted in both its announcement to its customers as well as Trade Station's customer services representative's disclosure to plaintiff that it did not maintain the proper amount of share certificates it would need to fulfill its obligations to customers to comply with their requests to transfer Nexpert shares to AST. Trade Station has no legal basis to claim it satisfied its duty to comply with plaintiff's entitlement order pursuant to Florida statutes because Trade Station's lending of MMTLP shares to third-party brokers in excess of the amount held for the benefit of customers prior to Nextbridge issuing a share certificate was not in compliance with the lending agreement and it is not reasonable to assume a broker lending shares in excess of the amount held for the benefit of customers and then failing to reclaim that excess complies with any quote reasonable commercial standard under Florida law. 119, by failing to maintain a proper aggregate quantity of fiscal next bridge shared certificates, plaintiff was denied its absolute right to exercise a share transfer request. 120, as such, plaintiff respectfully requests the court award monetary damages and any further relief. Fourth cause of action, incorporate everything said before. The Doe defendants are in association, in fact, of the third-party broker-dealers separate from Trade Station, which constitutes a, quote, enterprise within the meaning of Florida statutes. At all relevant times, the Doe defendants operated with the common purpose of shorting MMTLP shares. I love this, Mark Bazile and plaintiff, until the announced U3 halt was enacted after which it would be impossible to repurchase any borrowed and sold MMTLP shares on the open market and keeping any revenue, therefore, uh, generated by the opening of share positions. Trade Station is a person associated with the Doe defendants. Without Trade Station's willing participations, Doe defendants' scheme and common course of conduct would be unsuccessful. 125. Trade Station consistently loaned its customers MMTLP shares to the Doe defendants in connection with the Doe defendants opening short sale positions in MMTLP. MMTLP shares are securities under Florida statutes. 126. Trade Station fraudulently and intentionally loaned an amount of MMTLP shares to the Doe defendants in excess of the amount of fully paid shares Trade Station held on record for the benefit of its customers at the time Nextbridge distributed share certificates. In other words, Trade Station held counterfeit shares in violation of Florida statutes. As such, when Nextbridge executed its share exchange There was an imbalance. Uh, 128, further, when the Doe defendants opened their short positions in MMTLP, the borrowed shares were sold into the open market, including counterfeit MMTLP shares, representing quote-unquote borrowed shares loaned to the Doe defendants by trade decision, trade station. 129, because of the U3 halt, and the delisting, no less than 2.65 million borrowed short sold shares 
remain outstanding and not yet return to lenders. 130, trade stations conduct and participating in the affairs of this enterprise include obtaining fully paid MMTLP shares uh, with false claims, unlawfully, knowingly, consistently lending MMTLP shares to the Doe defendants for the purpose of opening short position in excess to the amount of shares and charging and collecting a commission fee or margin interest, part of which was given to customers as interest payments. I'm reading quickly because I'm tired. Uh, pattern of racketeering activity in violation of Florida statutes and trade stations participation in the Doe defendant scheme violates Florida statutes. The actions herein had a common class of victims, trade stations customers, who Ann Wagner doesn't protect. She'd rather protect the racketeers and trade station. As a direct and proximate result of the trade station's racketeering activities, plaintiff has been injured with regard to its property. Plaintiff is entitled to treble damage against trade station, as well as costs and reasonable attorney's fees. I hope they get discovery. By the way, this kind of thing will cause the financial settlement from Wall Street that I've talked about. If Wall Street, if Mark Bazile's penetration of the arbitration clause, the racketeering clause, the, the vitiating, I think's the word, of the lending agreement, if these things come to pass, Wall Street's going to shiver me timbers and they will plead to settle with all of you. And if you've moved your shares from MMTLP to Nextbridge, you'll still get a settlement offer because the whole thing, in my judgment, because the whole thing is so big. So this is fantastic. I'm very tired, but this is amazing lawsuit, amazing lawsuit. Fifth cause of action. They incorporate everything I've already read. Florida statutes make it unlawful for any person associated with any enterprise to conduct or participate directly or indirectly in such enterprise through a pattern of criminal activity. Can a congresswoman accept payoffs and avoid being part of a pattern of criminal activity? I guess if she meets Goldman Sachs in the well of the house, it would be exempt. I don't know. The Doe defendants are an association in fact, or, or Citadel. The Doe defendants are an association in fact of third-party broker dealers, separate from trade station, which constitute an enterprise within the meaning of Florence statutes. At all relevant times, the Doe defendants operated with the common purpose of illegally shorting MMTLP shares for profit until the announced U3 halt was enacted. They kept the revenues. Trade station is a person, and without that person's cooperation, the Doe defendants couldn't have um, committed crimes. Pursuant to the agreement, Trade Station loaned its the MMTLP shares. Trade Station fraudulently and intentionally loaned excess shares. Uh, order imbalance. Uh, when the Doe defendants opened their short positions in MMTLP, 
The borrowed shares were sold short in the market. Uh, Trade Station's conduct and participation in the fairs of this enterprise include obtaining fully paid MMTLP shares falsely, uh, unlawfully lending an amount of shares for opening short positions in excess, charging and collecting fees commission. You know, that's the point Ham always make. They charge... But they didn't earn, they didn't earn that revenue. So how can they book it? Go after the accountants. They can't book that. They charge fees, but they didn't do what they said they were gonna do. That's theft. Doesn't bother Ann. Doesn't bother Adina. Uh, the actions described herein constitute a pattern of criminal activity in violation of Florida statutes. Trade Station's participation in the Doe Defendant Scheme violates Florida statutes. Trouble damages and reasonable th attorney fees. Sixth cause. Um, okay, plaintiff bought a bunch of shares, put in sell orders, um, uh, uh, the agreement said they could sell at any time, um, which that's actually a weak argument because the sell orders were above market. But you got to put it in there. It's true. It's true enough. Um, resulting in monetary damages of $400,000 almost, um, they failed to uh, return physical certificate and expert shares. They could not, would not deliver, failed to deliver. They used the, they lose, used plaintiff shares as 100% collateral. So the request is for the numbers don't agree. Here it says 370,760. Here it says 360,370. Anyway, one of those numbers. Okay, that's, that's that uh, sixth cause is to return that money. Uh, seventh cause, negligent misrepresentation. Incorporate everything before. Trade station made false uh, statements of material fact. Plaintiff acted in reliance on that. Plaintiff was unaware that trade station would indefinitely dispossess plaintiff of its fully paid shares when entering into the loan agreement and trade station knew or should have known that this anti and antithetical I can't say, pronounce it this late antithetical, I think it's misspelled, antithetical, antithetical statement. I'm not pronouncing it correctly. I, my apologies. I'm just tired. Conflicts with its own prior statement made in which trade station stated there were in fact, there was in fact an Exbridge hydrocarbon certificate received. Antithetical. Antithetical. Ah, uh, I'm not pronouncing it right. Plaintiff has been harmed. 360,760. Pay monetary damages and compensated. Okay, eighth. 
Trade Station owed a duty to perform its services and obligations in a manner that would not injure customers. Trade Station breached that duty. Trade Station's uh, required to comply with federal and state securities laws, making sure that uh, it operates in compliance. They were negligent. Share imbalance. Okay, because of Trade Station's actions occurring in Florida, plaintiff has been injured and is entitled to an award of damages against Trade Station pursuant to Florida common law. Ninth cause of action. Plaintiff maintains a, possesses, a possessory right over the shares held in its Trade Station account. Plaintiff understood it would maintain a possessory interest in the shares in which the shares would be freely transferable and disposable. Through no fault of the plaintiff, Trade Station has lost plaintiff's property. Trade Station, in its refusal to transfer plaintiff's next bridge shares to the transfer agent or issue physical shares to the plaintiff, has wrongfully asserted dominion over plaintiff's lawfully purchased property, and this constitutes an indefinite disposition of plaintiff's property. Trade Station con continued control over its customer's next bridge stock stems from Trade Station admitting to lending counterfeit shares. Trade Station's refusal to transfer plaintiff shares, refusal to deliver physical share certificates, and notification to customers that it was unable to honor transfer requests are indicative of Trade Station's intent to indefinitely maintain dominion and control over and deny its customers their possessory interest in Nextbridge common stock. As such, plaintiff respectfully requests the court award monetary and compensatory damages. Tenth cause. By the way, here, where he says, he says, or she says, through no fault of the plaintiff, Trade Station has lost plaintiff's property. That's the analogy I give a lot to get you guys to move your shares to Nextbridge. Don't let the brokerage system lose your property. And don't let those those people on Twitter convince you that you have more options hanging on to your uh, laundry ticket than if you go collect your shirts, suits, sweaters, and ties from the from the dry cleaner. They're just they're trying to screw with you. They want you to not to do anything. They're working. They're part of this racketeering. They're part of it. Okay, 10th cause of action. Trade Station acts as an agent to its customers and has a duty to operate in compliance with state and federal laws. Good faith. Trade Station violated its agency relationship in the MMTLP purchase and failed in its duty to perform. 
failed to maintain phys physical possession and control of all fully expert shares. The, the Goldman Sachs lobbyists who go in Dan Wagner's office and then to invite her on trips um, or, or Citadel, it doesn't matter. I use Goldman Sachs interchangeably with a whole corrupt lot of them. Um, are going to say, well, it's electronic. But they made it electronic just so they could do this. There are no physical shares. It's all electronic. Guys, we, we got to, we, we, we got to work together and demand that people do their jobs. Um, as a result, a direct result of trade stations, continue, prior and continued breaches of its fiduciary duty, plaintiff has suffered monetary damages and has been indefinitely possessed, dispossessed. As such, plaintiff respectfully requests that this court award monetary damages. Eleventh cause. A trade sta station <clears throat> dispersed monthly interest payments totaling no less than $326. This is about the entitlement. They didn't, they didn't allow for plaintiff's claim of entitlement to the shares. The circumstances are such that it would be inequitable for trade station to retain possession and dominion over plaintiff's next spread shares without due compensation to the plaintiff. So they're asking for rewards of that. Twelfth cause of action. Basically saying plaintiff performed its end of the bargain. Uh, the parties had a continued confidential relationship. Trust and confidence. Trade station continues to be unjustly enriched by maintaining possession and dominion over plaintiff's next bridge shares after plaintiff's request to dispose of and or regain possession over the shares were denied. This is really powerful on the part of Mark Bazile. Plaintiff respects re respectfully request equitable trust be created on plaintiff's next bridge shares that all the profits be accrued to the plaintiff's You know, basically, they want to put a ring fence, uh, that. And then the, the final part, plaintiffs demand a trial by jury. Excellent. No arbitration jury. That's excellent. And prayer for relief. Where, wherefore, for the reasons set forth in the plaintiff's first through twelfth cause of action, plaintiff seeks a verdict and judgment against the defendants as follows. A, award the plaintiff monetary damages in the amount of no less than 360,370 plus consequential damages. This is huge. If this happens, it will make Wall Street tremble. B, imposing, and I think it will happen, it's deserved. I, I'm not trying to show any doubt. B, imposing an equitable trust on plaintiff's next bridge shares and the profits, yeah, okay. C, awarding treble damages, and here's the part, attorney fees and court costs, and awarding just and other equitable reef. The most likely way this is gonna go is settlement. It won't ever get to court. First, they have to get through that arbitration clause, and then they have to get through that agreement clause 
And if they do, this will go through court. There'll be a lot of information entered into the record and the plaintiff will receive a settlement offer from trade station. And then the pressure will be on the lawyers will say, well, you gotta accept it because it's a lot of money to the lawyers too. And the plaintiff will say, well, I, I, this isn't good enough. You know, I want it exposed. And then as what always happens with the Kramers, trade station will neither admit nor deny and it'll be allowed to continue. The racketeering brethren will continue to be able to lobby con Congress and they won't have to admit wrongs. And years will go by maybe before this happens. But boy, it's, it's a huge, huge step in the right direction. I hope that the attorneys involved that whether it's it's a group of us or something, because you know you can't expect the attorney to pay the hard costs, and in fact you can't probably can't expect the attorney to forego other payments. But um, I would love to see this go to discovery. And I'd love that Mark Bazile were able, if they were able to find that in fact, um, hundreds of millions of shares system wide, but if they just do it to trade station, they'll find enough. I think trade station is there as a pressure valve for the system. So they'll get the names, they can go further on all that. Maybe it's a class action. I don't know, I just hope it doesn't settle and then, and then it, all the records are sealed. But we're a long way from that. We're a long, long way from that. This is gonna cause, the thing that's gonna cause Wall Street to be nervous is this punctures the arbitration clause. It punctures the arbitration clause. They control, Wall Street controls all aspects of these rivers of money. They control the lawyers they have, the big law firms, they control the regulators, they control Congress, they control the political parties, they control the media, they control it all. But what they don't control is if you pierce that arbitration clause, you gotta go into court. And the court system may be slow, but it's on the record. Okay, so the two attorneys at, I'm sorry, my arm is killing me and I'm tired. I shouldn't, I, I, I've gone on for three hours. I guess I should have stopped. Um, I, I'm not gonna. A Japia, a, a Japija, a Japija Cruz. Esquire um, is the lead attorney in Naples for the Bazile Law Firm. And Joseph R. Rose, Pro Hoc Vice forthcoming uh, at the Bazile Law Firm, Council for Plaintiff Intercoastal Waterways. I think it's awesome. And I hope the Bazile Law Firm becomes as rich as Angelos with this. There's the, the courage, the understanding, the um, willingness to move forward against obstacles that other attorneys wouldn't deserves to be richly rewarded. I think it's a great case. Um, I do stand by it only describes part of the crime, but it, man, it's, it, you start opening it up and you get someone as incurious as a Dean of Friedman to even understand it, or as 
you know, too busy and too important to really care about American investors as Ann Wagner, too corrupted as the majority of Congress. Is there anybody out there, anyone who is has the power of subpoena, has the power of oversight, who has a staff? Is there anyone out there curious? Is there anyone out there worried? Is there anyone out there who will fulfill their oath of office? Is there anyone out there who is not corrupted by this system and the glorification of the riches that we bestow on a few men who have the audacity to steal in daylight using our legal system, our lawyers, our Congress, our government, our regulators, without paying taxes, destroying American jobs and, and revenue streams and futures. Is there anyone out there I feel like I've shamed everyone I can think of. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. And I thank you for watching. I know it was long. Um, it helped me to go through it. I'll try to see if I can get plaintiff on my live and maybe get Mark Bazile, that would be great, but I'm sure he's gonna be really busy now. Uh, these are a couple of major breakthroughs. If he can bust the wall of the arbitration agreement, the dam will open. If he can bust the wall of the loan agreements, the dam will fall. And what's in it for all of you in MMTLP is they have attorneys. And they have lobbyists. And as you, the 65,000, continue to put pressure on Wall Street, continue to put pressure on Congress, the tide's going to shift. And uh, the big brokerage firms and the big criminals are going to say, we got to settle this. Before it becomes a demand for full disclosure. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it at that. I, I'm so disappointed in our system. I'm so proud of, of the plaintiff here, so proud of, of the work that um, Mark Bazile stepped up and did. I think he recognized a opportunity to make money, there's no question. But I know for a fact that he took a risk that other attorneys were not willing to. And for that, he deserves to make money. I just hope, I, I, I do pray that they don't settle this. But even if they settle this one, he's incrementally added to, remember, he got the Kramers in trouble for usury. So they had to come down to Virginia and destroy 325 more companies as the SEC complaint says. But it, this is tremendous work by Mark Bazile. The, the you know, the whole group of you that work so hard is amazing. Please stop allowing the negative, the boo birds. You'll know them by their words. If they tell you to leave your shares in MMTLP, 
Look at this complaint. Look at this complaint. I'm not going to find it quickly. Anyway, this complaint has at least two of the prayers for relief being related to the fact that plaintiff asked for her shares. She asked for them and she didn't get them. And that's what opens this all up. If you don't ask for your shares from Nextbridge and you don't receive from your broker dealer that they failed to deliver, none of this applies. Ask for them. Those people on Twitter, and there's one aggressive guy, he sings songs about me to make fun of me. I'm sure there's a lot to make fun of me about. But um, don't listen to him. He's there to get you not to do something like this. Imagine if all of you tried to move your shares from uh, MMTLP to Nextbridge and the first 1,500 of you were able to do it, but the next 10,500 couldn't do it, and it's on record, imagine this lawsuit then. All right, sayonara. Is that a good thing or a bad thing to say sayonara? Um, <laughs> I'll say good night instead. I hope you're all well and uh, uh, thank you for listening. We'll have more. We'll have more shorter, I hope, discussions on this. This has a potential to be breakthrough. So peace to everyone. Cheers.